Welcome back to the Fierce Fish First Tech Challenge programming tutorial series. Our goal in this series is to provide simple and straightforward guidance in programming an FTC robot. And today we're going to talk about DC motors. So this is very exciting for you because this is the first instance that we're actually getting to program a robot component. So hopefully your motors are plugged in on your expansion hub and they are configured in your phones. And remember that configuration name because we are going to need it later. So I'm going to start. I've already created some classes. I'm going to start with the Teleop motor tutorial. And this is just basically telling you how to do. We're just basically going to start by setting up our motor. Okay, let's declare it. And this is how you declare a DC motor. You just go DC motor. And then the name of what you want to use in the code for your DC motor. I named mine test motor. I'm going to name it test motor. Okay, so that's how you declare your motors. Just go DC motor and then the name of the motor. Okay, now let's go into the init void here. And this is how you initialize a motor. I'm going to go test motor equals the hardware map dot dc motor dot get then here's the string this is what you named it in your configuration i named mine test motor now i like to keep this and this the same just so that there's less confusion on my part but that's completely up to you what you want to do with your configuration name this does not have to be your configuration name this does not have to be your configuration name but this does so that it knows where to go and then of course include the semicolon afterwards so now you can also set the direction of your motor. Right now it's defaulted to the forward direction, but say you wanted to reverse it because it's in a drivetrain. So here's how you would reverse your motor. You would go the name of the motor, mess that up, dot set direction. And then you're going to, the directions are forward and reverse. You don't need to set a direction to forward unless it's already in reverse. So we're going to go reverse. So it's going to import DC motor simple. We can get rid of the simple part and then I can optimize my imports. Okay. And then that's how you set a motor to reverse or forward. You can also set the zero power behavior. There are two zero power behaviors. They are break and float. Break resists any force that's pulling on the motor, which I prefer and float it just kind of doesn't care it's just kind of free floating there anything can turn the motor at any time which you may need in some instances we actually did use it this season so here's how you do that you go you get the motor name that set zero power behavior and then i'll set it to break okay and that's how you set a, Z a motor a dc motor to break or you could do float I spell float correctly. That's how you do that, but I'm going to keep it at break. Okay. And for the purposes of this, I'm going to get rid of the reverse. I'm just going to comment it out, but now you know how to set a motor to reverse. Anyways, it's there if you want it. Okay. Now we're going to go into the public void loop, and this is how you're actually going to start controlling your motor. So to make a motor move, you're going. it's the command is called set power, so you're going to have the motor name dot set power. And then this is a double between negative 1 and 1. So if I want to set it to full power, going the forward direction, I'm going to set it to 1. If I want to set it the other way, it's going to be negative 1. And any number in between, and 0, of course, is stopped. So that is how you set power to a motor. Now in teleop, to control your motors, let's say if I wanted to you if I wanted to go if yes you do use conditional statements for your teleops. So I would get familiar with conditional statements if you're not too confident with them. So if I go if gamepad one and that's how you refer to your um, controllers in the code is gamepad one and gamepad two. Gamepad one dot Let's go to the A button. If you press the A button, then I want my motor to set 
to half power. Okay, now there's an issue here. If I press the A button and then release it, it's going to keep going because I wasn't told to stop the motor otherwise or do something else. So else, I'm going to have to use else here and then set the motor power to zero. And then that is how you control a motor with the game pads, with the buttons. Now, let's say I wanted to control the motor with a joystick. So I'd go that, say I wanted to do left stick Y if it is greater than 0.1, then I want to set the motor power to one. But there's a better way we can do this with the controls to make it more easy to make it easier for your drivers to control exactly what they want to do with the motors when they want to do and that is to create float variables so here we go as float say i wanted to call it motor power this is just a test motor power and it's going to equal gamepad one's left stick y input so then I can go here and change this to motor power. Because as we learned last video, this is going to be constantly updating because it's in the loop. And it's going to set it to the exact power. But right now, this is only if we go in the positive direction with the controller. So we have to say or. That's how you say or in Java. Gamepad 1 the left stick Y if it is less than negative 0.1 it will also set it to reverse and then if nothing's happening it'll set the motor to zero and that's basically everything with teleop control of the motors now let's dive into auto control of motors all right so this is my auto method i've declared my motor already i'm using linear op mode just so you guys can see the difference here, I've gotten the motor, I've set the zero power behavior, and I'm waiting for start. Okay, now, let's say after I press the start button, I want my motor to go forward for five seconds. Now, have you ever heard the term of coding a time-based auto? It's super inconsistent. But we're, as we get more into these tutorials, we're actually the next video, we're going to deal with motor encoders which is a little more consistent, and then we'll deal with the different ways you can use motor encoders to make it even more consistent and things like that. But right now we're just going to do time-based just so you can see, and this will also teach you about the sleep function. So let's say after I wait for start, I want my test motor to set power 1, and then to wait we're going to use sleep. And then it uses milliseconds. So say I wanted, I already said I want it five seconds. So we have to do the conversion, five thousand seconds. And then we're going to set the power zero. Because say this is just a park auto, and you're, for some reason your robot is so slow that it takes five seconds for you to park underneath the bridge for whatever reason. I don't know why I chose five seconds, honestly. But here we have an issue as well. And you'll see as if once I build it, it's going to say I have an issue. Hopefully. No, it didn't say I have an issue. But here's the other thing. Sleep throws, interrup or throws interrupted exceptions. So we have to declare here, if you're using sleep, you have to use interrupted exception. Okay. And now... It should work. It's still going to work properly anyways. But here, the build is successful. And everything's great. Everyone's happy. Our motor's driving forward five. But also, what if we wanted to change directions with the motor? Or not change directions, just change the power. So let's say I wanted to move forward one for five seconds and then go backwards at half speed for two and a half seconds well I can do that so I just have to keep stacking the code go set power negative 0.5 
And I said I wanted to do that for, how long did I say? I said two and a half seconds. So you have to do the conversion to milliseconds, and that's already done for you. And then you got to set the power to zero. Okay, and then after that is done, your auto will stop, your robot will end up wherever it is, and this test motor, and yeah, I think that's it for this video. So today we learned how to configure and to use a DC motor without any add-ons in a teleop and autonomous space. Next video we're going to learn about motor encoders to make this auto movement more consistent. So... Yeah, that's everything. So from all of us here at Fierce Fish, we hope you have a great day.